Hello, here's a new version of the talking name picker. I wanted to make it more visually interesting. So now this is what it does. Before it looked like simple strings of text going around a, an invisible Ferris wheel. And um, I think this is much more interesting. And it's a lot of fun to do that 3D graphics with P5JS. So I'm gonna talk about how that works but first, I'll demonstrate what it looks like um, through the whole process. So you have your list of names you can copy, and uh, I'll just reload the page and paste into here. You can make this bigger if you want to, and then you push Start, and then it randomly positions these little kind of cards, colored cards with the names on them, and then chooses a rotation speed for them, and then sets them in motion. Then when you pick one, look what happens. William. Logue. It doesn't always pronounce them right. Liam. Charlotte. But look at what it's doing. Amelia. It's gradually undoing whatever rotations are in effect, and then it brings it closer, closer to us. James. Emma. Evelyn, Sophia, Elijah. Um, then you can push start, you can restart. You can also have, um, if you want the option of calling on your students more than once each, you can do this. Then it gets really busy. Just for fun, let's see what it looks like with a lot in there. Ha! <laughs> Little too much. Isabella, Sophia. Okay, I'll leave that running and let's look at how this works. This is a web app, obviously, so there's an HTML page and this is it. And it uses Bootstrap. And let's see what's interesting here. So you got a title, you've got this text area. We have the calls per name, which I call max calls, and a couple of buttons, a checkbox. Those are in here. And then we use jQuery and also P5JS. And the P5JS domain library. There are two JavaScript files, Picker and Sketch. Uh, let's look at Picker first. Okay, so you create a Picker and it handles the logic of doing the picking. And it's a class, so it has a constructor and one method other than the constructor. So what does it do? These two lines enable the speech synthesis. This creates a space, if you like, in which these cards are residing. It's a JavaScript array. And then we say that when we click the Start button, we want to run this block of code here. And what does that do? That pulls out the calls per name into here. And then it gets the names from here splits them on new lines, and then it resets the card space to an empty array. And then for all these names that we pulled out, one on each line, then we trim them in case um, there are spaces before or after the name. And then we filter on, um, then we filter such that we only keep the names that have a length after, uh, a length greater than zero after we trim them. And then for each one of those names, we do this. Um, we can insert the name into the space one or more times depending on what this value is. So that's what this loop is here. I uh, starts at zero, goes while I is less than max calls, and then it pushes a new name card, one of these things, into the card space array. Then it shuffles the card space. And this is uh, just a popular shuffling algorithm. I can't remember what the name of it is. It just uh, goes through and 
uh, switches. It just swaps elements of the array. And now here we add a click listener for pick this button here. And um, we'll come back to this later, but we have to have a way of removing the cards after this picking animation Mia. is finished. Once they get really close to us, Isabella, then they can be deleted. So they're deleted here with this filter. So the only cards we keep are the ones with their state set to normal. And when we look at uh, that class for the cards, you'll see the different states. Then we say, if we have cards, if there are any cards left, then we'll, we'll do this uh, code here. Then we randomly pick a card and put it here. And then we call the pick method of the card object. And then we set the text from the card's name right in here. And then we tell that if the speak checkbox is checked, which it might not be, but if it is, then we speak the utterance where the text of the, other, text of the utterance is set to the card's name. Okay, that's everything in this JavaScript file. Let's look now at the sketch, which also includes the name card class. So the sketch, this P5JS sketch, you're going to expect to see uh, set up and draw methods. They're down here at the bottom. And then we also have, um, we're creating the picker. The picker is this first thing we looked at. And then this PG, the, um, the text can't be rendered directly into the 3D world. So we have to have a separate, um, what is it called? A graphics object in order to render in 2D mode the text and then we um, place it um, as a texture on a plane. So these are all planes. Okay, so when we create a name card, which we do from the picker here with new name card, this is when we push the start button. We run through this code. We remember the name. We pick a random hue. So you see the cards have a random hue. And then we randomly pick a position on X, Y, and Z. And then we randomly choose rotation. So every time draw is called, these rotate a little bit on each of the three axes. And then... Um, what is this? This is the maximum um, change in the rotation. And that's used in order to... Um, oh, interesting. Okay. I see that I meant to put them here. So let me just um, make this change now and then we can see what it looks like as it's different. Okay, we'll come over here and reload, and then I'll paste those names in again. I don't know if they're still on the clipboard. Ah, okay, now it's rotating uh, much slower. I wondered why uh, it wasn't doing it the way I thought. I may want to speed it up, but this is kind of interesting. Maybe let's just double this. Oops. Yeah, that'll do. I don't know. I can play with that. Okay, so that's the max rotation delta. That's a that's a delta letter of the Greek alphabet, and um, we're, the maximum amount is uh, two one hundredths of a radian per frame. Okay, so the we randomly choose the rotation amounts on each of the three axes. And we define the different states of the name card. So it can be in the normal state where it's just rotating like this, or it can be in the picking state where it's moving no. towards us, or it can be in the picked state where it's completed that animation after being picked. And we started out in the normal state. All right, that's the constructor. Now the name card has a draw method. But I think before we look at that, 
let's just look at the setup and draw functions. The setup function uses uh, the HSB color mode and then it creates a canvas and puts it in the right place on the web page with this parent. Then it creates this, um, so notice this is, a, this is 3D for the, the main canvas. And then for this graphics object we create, that's 2D. And we use this, as I said before, to render the text because the text can't be rendered directly on these planes in 3D. And then we set the color mode for that graphics object also to hue, saturation, brightness. And then in the draw function here, we make the background black. So you see that space there is black. And then we say for each card in the card space, draw yourself. So that takes us back to the draw, to the draw method here in the name card. Okay, so what does it do? There's a bit of code here. How about we um, just make it a little smaller so we can look at it uh, in this uh, higher level view here. Okay, so push and pops around everything. That's to isolate the drawing of each of these from the others. Um, and then we set the background to the hue. And then the saturation is always the maximum. And the brightness is always uh, 40%. Um, I want the white, I want there to be good contrast between the white and the background of the cards. So if we limit the brightness of the cards, then we're, we'll have good contrast. Then the fill 255 is the color, the white color. Text size 45, I just got that through experimentation. And then we draw the text. Oh, and I should point out that these are operating on that separate 2D graphics object. Uh, then we draw the text. And then we use this rendered text to texture what follows, which is the plane. So we're taking this, the, the name that we wrote, and we're using it to, to texture or, or paint, I suppose, the plane down below. But there's other stuff happening first, so let's look at that. First thing we do is translate um, so that when we call plane, the card will be drawn in the location that it's supposed to be in. And then we rotate on the current value of these rotations. And then we consider the state before we do anything else. And in the normal state, we do these things. We um, modify the rotation. So how do we read this? Well, let's start with the parentheses here. So we take the current x and we add to it the change in x and then we um, wrap around 2 pi. So 2 pi is a full circle of rotation and we always want this number to be between 0 and 2 pi. So the modulo operator takes the remainder of dividing this sum by 2 pi. And that gives us something between 0 and 2 pi. Then we store that in x. Same thing for y and z. Okay, so that explains uh, what's happening here. And then in the picking state, which is the animation here. Liam as it kind of unrotates and then moves towards us. See that? Mia. It unrotates and moves towards us. So in this state, what does it do? What are we doing to the x, y, and z of rotations and the position x, y, and position z? Well, we are bringing the rotations gradually to zero. That's what this says. Subtract 0.1 from it, but don't go any lower than zero. And then eventually x, y, and z will become zero. And then um, the x, y, and z rotation uh, amounts. And then for position, we do something similar. We just subtract five um, units, five pixels, and stopping at zero. And then the z is a little different because we bring the cards um, very close towards us. 
So it starts out with a negative Z. Elijah. And then comes up with a positive Z, and it goes all the way to 500, which brings it brings us brings it uh, behind the camera, so we can't see it anymore. Uh, okay, so the position, this line of code adds five to the position, but doesn't go any bigger than the max Z. Then we just check and see if we're done with all this. So here we're just comparing everything to zero or max Z. And if we're done with that animation, then we change the state. Oops, I need to change this to picked. Okay, because now uh, we're making the transition from the picking state to the picked state. Okay, now let's look what we do in the picked state. Nothing. We don't do anything other than what we've already done. Then um, with all the, with the translation applied, with the rotations applied, then we'll draw the plane. All right, the pick method of name card gets called by the picker. You may have seen that before. Let's see, pick, card.pick. That's where that gets called from. And that just sets the state to picking. All right, did we cover everything? I think so. Uh, where is this? How do you run it? Where's the source code? The, you can find it on uh, davebsoft.com slash software. And this is the talking name picker. And then for the source code, you can go to github.com slash DC Bruchetti. And you go to, um, let's see, this has its own repository. So it's name picker. And you'll find the code in there. Um, Tell people you know who might be interested in running the name picker, school teachers, or anybody who has to call on people fairly. I'd uh, be uh, delighted to have people use this. So long.